Well, welcome, you folks. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, this is the uh, the 21st of February of 2024, and I'm Don Snow, and uh, this is our Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group, the weekday class. Uh, we call them the Family History Update classes, and uh, the today's topic is on the website. It's a free website called OurTimelines.com. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a wonderful website. I've just had a lot of fun playing around with it and preparing the, the class for today. Uh, uh, we'd be interested to know where you're from. If some of you are uh, watching this on Facebook, just let us know. Uh, type in the comments where you're from and on, on Zoom. But most of most of the people, we know where you're from on Zoom already. Um, uh, our host is Gerhard Roof. Uh, I, I'm in Provo, Utah. And Gerhard is in Orem, Utah, which is only about a mile or two away from where I happen to be at the time. And uh, we usually have people online from various places around the U.S. and sometimes even out of the U.S. Um, I want to remind you one thing before we get started. RootsTech.org is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints program. On It's not just genealogy. It's rem The theme this year is Remember. And it's about families and ancestors and descendants and what's going on now. And it's free if you want to register online. So do register online for free, rootstech.org. And then, uh, and if you want to attend it in person, you can. It's in the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. But uh, that costs you money to attend up there. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, this free website and uh, tell you what it is. Here's what we're going to be discussing. There are, there's a handout and notes that are online. They're on my website now, and, and Gerhard will post the uh, link to those in a few minutes on there as soon as anybody else joins. Um, on, he'll have a, both in the comments as well, in the Facebook comments as well as in the YouTube channel. Uh, and this is being recorded. And so uh, if it's being, if you want to watch this, you may be watching the six months downstream from now, and that's all right if you do. Uh, I'll give you my email address in case you have to have questions that you want to ask me later or something. Here's the stuff we're going to be talking about. Uh, this website is, uh, it's completely free. Uh, they'd like donations, but they don't hand you for them, hound you for them. And uh, they, 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 I really appreciate all the work they've gone to in here. Uh, it'll generate for you a timeline. You type in the uh, uh, the the birth and the death year uh, of your ancestor, or start with yourself. Try yourself, and it will list for you all of the world events that have occurred, whether they're political or uh, uh, military or uh, wars or uh, inventions or uh, all, disasters, all sorts of different things, and it'll show it in in a beautiful colored bar graphs. I'll show you some of these examples here in a minute, and we'll generate some, and then I'll show you a couple of them that, that give you some more insight into it. You can add some personal events in there uh, yourself, up to 10 events. They have a way that you can enter uh, those yourself. Uh, you can save that uh, chart and the, the bar graphs, and I the colors are so beautiful, I like to save it in the colored thing. But they have a black and white way that if you want to save it as a black and white thing and just print it with, uh, with, with your black and white printer so it doesn't take so much colored ink, they've got a way to even do that. Uh, we'll give you some ideas and, and helps and things to keep in mind uh, during it. And then there'll be some conclusions of it. Now, the notes themselves are on that website right there. That's my website, U-V-T-A-G-G. -G, that's Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group dot org. Uh, we're in a, uh, we've been in existence now for 30, I think we're up to 33 or 34 years. Uh, we're the old PATH users group years ago. We changed the name, uh, well, 15 years ago. Uh, but we still teach the classes on the second Saturday of the month. And then weekday classes like you know, this one here. And then, but that right there, what you're seeing on the screen is my class page uh, where the notes are. The notes are stored on there and they're all with links that work. So if you go to that page and use the notes there, you can just click on the link uh, to get to whatever, whether it's a, uh, a website or whatever else it is on there. 
and there's uh, links all on there for the videos because these are being recorded and they're uh, for the last several years we've been recording them and posting them. Okay, now that's the class notes page itself. Uh, let let me let me demonstrate for you. Let me go to the class notes page. Let's see. I do that by going to hitting Alt Tab and going to this. Okay, now this is what that link takes you to. That's Don Snow's class notes page. Now that's pretty small for me to read. Maybe you can read it. You probably can. Your eyesight is better. Uh, my, my, I've got macular regeneration and it's got a problem. And so uh, I have to use a, a, a magnifier, which is built into Windows. This is Windows 10 that I'm running. Uh, I'm going to hit my, uh, let's see, the Windows, the right Windows key plus the plus sign. And that will turn on my a browser okay now i mean a, a magnifier now it's larger uh and that i can i can read the stuff larger uh in, instead of using a computer monitor i use a big screen tv uh so that this is uh makes it larger on the tv there's the different pages at the start down here is a there's some classes coming up there, there's links in there for information about where these are stored and how you can watch them or whatever you want to do on it. Uh, this Under classes coming up, you'll notice, uh, you, you may not be able to see my cursor, but I'm circling around right now, and it's kind of moving the thing up and down, I'm, where it says classes coming up. Uh, this That's today's class. Today is the uh, 21st of February, and uh, it's, it's on this website. And notice it's an underlined link. Uh, and there's the next couple of classes uh, coming up in the next couple of months. I'm going to go do more on uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, which we did in the past. Uh, a couple of classes on that already. We'll do some more on that. But here's the link. And if you click on that, it'll take you directly to the, the web page. And I've already opened that up. And that's this one right here. So here's the notes for today's class, uh, the free website. Uh, ourtimelines.com. There's a short, well, well, let me, let me turn off the magnifier now because for you who have good eyesight, it's annoying to watch that, but for me, I need it. Um, the, in the upper, uh, uh, upper, the first part up there is an, uh, an abstract about what, what this is all about and what it'll do. Then there's a welcome and, uh, an introduction and uh, what the problem is for today, which is to discuss this website and show you some of the things that it will do and illustrate it uh, on there. We'll discuss the website itself, and I'll show you what that is here in just a minute because we'll click on it so that we're actually using the website. And you'll find it very simple to use. It's really, it's, it's good. You just got to know how to get started and you're all set with it. Now, then there's a, a section here on entering personal notes. And I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate by using my dad's uh, timeline with my dad, where I've entered, I think it's nine or 10 personal. You can enter up to a 10 personal notes. And I think I got nine, uh, maybe, I, maybe even 10 uh, entered in there in his. And I'll show you how I did that and what you can do with it. Then how do you save the chart? There's a way to save the chart uh, so that you can uh, keep all the colors in there. Or if you do want to print it, you can actually print it in black and white if you want to, and they even have a way to do that automatically. Then there'll be some comments and stuff, uh, things to be careful of down at the bottom here, and then conclusions as to what you can do with uh, with all of this stuff. Okay, now back to the uh, uh, the the PowerPoint. Let me show you what we're going to be. Uh, there's the is that? Uh, oh, I, I'm uh, holding down the wrong key. Uh, is that there we go? Okay, this is what we're going to be demoing today. We're going to be an introduction of the website, and I'll show you that here in a second. Then generating timelines will actually generate one so that you can see how to do it because it's really simple. And then how you add personal data and what you can do with that. And it allows you to add uh, up to 10 events. And if you know a little bit about HTML programming, HTML is it's jargon in computer stuff. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, if you know a little bit about that, you can actually add more than, than the 10 events and change things around and so on. Then saving the color bar graphs and so on and, and some examples. All right, now let's go back to, uh, 
the uh, uh, the tab back to get to this, and I'm going to now. I'm going to have to turn my magnifier back on so I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, see a right Windows Plus key. <clears throat> we'll turn it on, and I've actually just just put a, a link on here. Our timelines, it's right there. It, it's easy enough to do. Once you click on the, uh, once you have it, th this is the link uh, on here. This is the, that's the website. And once you have the website, there, one of the notes, I think it's the third item on my note there, says just drag this thing in front, uh, the, the uh, icon in front, drag it down to your taskbar, and you'll have a link that when you click on it, it'll take you right to this. Now, let me turn the magnifier off so that you can see what this thing looks like uh, uh, in the in the, the view. It's uh, This is what the, the website looks like. It says welcome, and they've got some information about what they're doing here and about how they've written it. And, and there's a, a, a small picture of uh, something about the one of the websites, et cetera. And when you get all ready to try it out, when you're, if you've read the introduction, over here on the left side, the second item down says timeline. You see it over here on the left side. There are several different uh, menus over there. The second one down is timeline. I'm going to have to turn that back on so I can see it. Uh, Windows Plus. Uh, it's this one right here. Timeline. So I click on that one. Okay, now uh, it says generate timelines. Uh, it'll actually start from, you can put in a beginning date, uh, birth year, for anything after 1000 AD. It'll go that far back. And, uh, and then, and it'll go right up to the current year. 2024 is the current year. Uh, it'll only take about, I think, 120 years or something like that. It won't allow you to put in 300 years, but, uh, but put in the, the birth year and the death year. And you can read through all this stuff. And when you get done reading through the stuff, you get down here to the right here where it says, okay, here you go. It says your name. Now, this is not, this is, this is not you. This is put in yourself. Uh, for example, I'm going to change that. I'm highlighting all that stuff where it says your name. I'm going to put in me. Uh, D-O-N-A. Well, I won't put in me. I'll put in my brother. Uh, Sydney. Richard Snow. That was my brother. Uh, he was born in, his birth year was 1929. 1929. And he died in 1992. 1992. Okay, that's all you have to enter right there. Now, you look at these lines down here, it sees where it says printable. That's the thing if you want just the black and white. If you don't want the color, uh, then uh, you, you click on that first. Here it says generate the timeline. And this one says clear the thing and start over. I'll click on generate the timeline and watch what happens. That quick, it has now generated the timeline. And this is, there it says it's a custom timeline for Sidney Richard Snow from 1929 to 1992. And here are the things that occurred. Now, you know, well, turn off the magnifier so that you can see the full chart yourselves. <clears throat> There's the over on the left. It gives you the date and the year. And you notice the bar graph, the, the length of time. Uh, that uh, first thing was the reign of King George and so on. The white one there says the Roaring Twenties. That was from before Dick was born uh, to up until the time he was to age zero. Uh, there in uh, the, 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 the next white one down that I can read clearly is Pluto was discovered when Dick was uh, Dick was my brother Sidney Richards no he went by Richard or Dick uh, he, Pluto was discovered when Dick was one uh, all the other events in there are different sorts of things that occurred uh, notice the one there's one there that says Herbert Hoover uh, <clears throat> became uh, what does it say uh, president of the U.S. Uh, and so on. There's all of these different events. I'm, I'm going to just scroll this down. I'm scrolling the mouse wheel so that you can see what's going on. And you see over on the left, you see the length of the, the bar graph and the color. And the color coding tells you what the event was. And uh, so back on that 
original generating screen, if you scroll down a little bit further from where we were, it tells you what these different colors represent. Uh, so that red represents something and purple is something else and and uh, disasters are one color and military are, uh, and so on. Uh, look at all this stuff. The air core, uh, there's a aircraft a jet engine was developed when Dick was, notice over on the right, it says when Dick was 10 years old, that would have been 1939, I guess that's probably what it says over on the left, the aircraft jet engine was developed uh, and so on. Digital computer. When Dick was 10 years old, the first digital computer uh, was uh, uh, developed and so on. All this stuff, I'm just scrolling on down and you see the different uh, colors and the different sorts of things. There's uh, that uh, yellow one down there says multiple, multiple polio epidemics in the U.S. from when Dick was 19 until he was 26 uh, and so on. And so uh, now notice there's no personal events in here yet because we didn't uh, put in personal events, but we can add personal events uh, uh, to it, which I'll show you examples here in a, in a little bit. Some of these bars are longer than others because there's there's that uh, the yellow one down there says the seventh cholera pandemic from Dick was 32 to age 62. It went for 30 years, uh, not just in the U.S., but elsewhere. Uh, primarily outside the U.S. But you can see all the stuff that's in here. They, all this stuff's in there. So whatever birth date and birth year, uh, uh, birth, birth year and death year you put in here, it'll generate all this stuff that's, uh, that's in between uh, those time periods. And it'll go clear down to when Dick, was, uh, when Dick died in 1992. And he was 63. Actually, he was 62 when he died. Uh, this thing is it's, it's off by about a year in some cases because it depends on what time of the year they're considering the event and uh, what time of the birth. And it only uses the year. It doesn't use the exact date uh, in the year. Now, that gives you an example of what you can do with, uh, with just typing in just the birth year and the death year and the name. Now, let me go back. Uh, I'll hit the back arrow up there. I think I can always, yeah, there I got back. Okay, now we're back to this page. Now, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. See, it still keeps the stuff in there about my brother and the information. But now here are these big blank uh, spaces. There's 10 of them here that you can enter events yourself, 10 different events. And over here on the right are the colors, that the different sorts of things. So that uh, depending on whether it's a historical event or a technological event or uh, a personal history, historical event, Put the little dot in the color so that the, whatever you enter gives you the right uh, uh, color for the bar on there. You enter, back up here at the top, you enter the birth year, the starting year uh, in the first box, the ending year in the second box, and then a description as to what that was. Now, I'm going to show you now from, the, and then you go back up and click on the uh, generate the timeline. And it puts these things in where they belong. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you an example. I don't want to take time to type them all in now. So I'm going to show you what I've done uh, for setting up my dad's, uh, the information. Uh, hmm, I've, it's off, off to the side. I've got a, uh, let's see, I hadn't thought about doing that because this thing covers it up. Uh, maybe if I minimize this. Um, Turn the magnifier back on so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, there's the, uh, I'll minimize that and see if this will make it over far enough. No, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to escape from the, from, from here. Okay. Now over here on the right, I've, I've got two separate things right here. This first one that I'm going to click on it, it's a, it's a Chrome thing. I'm going to double click. So it will open in the, this is something that I did uh, yesterday or the day before about my dad. Let me turn the magnifier off again. Okay, so this is a custom timeline for Eldon Stafford Snow. That's my dad. He was born in 1891 and he died in 1954. Uh, so here's the information on him. Now, I entered eight or 10 different items themselves in here. For example, here's this long yellow bar 
that's his birth, his life. Well, let, let me open this up so it'll look like on a line. It won't, uh, it'll make it uh, spread the line out so that you can see it more. <clears throat> okay, now I entered in, instead of just entering his birth year as 1891, I put his birth year as 1891, but then I put the ending year as when he died in 1954. So it gives me this long yellow bar, which is his entire lifespan. And so it says life. Uh, the, this, the, I wrote this life born in Bunkerville, Nevada. That's just across the river from Mesquite, Nevada, if you've been down there, uh, which was Lincoln County in those days. Now it's in Clark County, uh, Nevada. Okay, and that, that was from his birth year to age 63. He actually died at 62, but because of the way they figured the years here, it's off by, by one year. Okay, now I, there's these are other events that occurred during his dad's lifetime. And as I looked at this the other, just uh, a couple of days ago when I was setting this up to use for an illustration here uh, today, I thought, gosh, I didn't realize this was all happening at, when dad was, but when dad was born, there were no, telephones there was no electricity there were no cars there were no airplanes all this stuff uh came about uh, later on uh movies was, first came out were first invented when dad was two years old and uh notice it's got to the date that the age of my dad at the end of each one of these things now there's a plague in hong kong and china uh, with the problems and all these different uh, things, different uh, states became uh, states during different times. And so the Utah enters the Union. Dad was uh, age five uh, when uh, Utah became a state. And that was 1896, wasn't it? As I recall, it probably said, yeah, 1896 over on the left side. You can see that. And you see the little bar over there, the little slim bar that shows you roughly how old dad was at the time. Because the length of those lines is how old, how long Dad was. Here's a there's a sixth cholera. I didn't know there were these cholera epidemics, but there was bunches of those that occurred while Dad was just a kid. Uh, Hawaii was organized and so on. Uh, you'll see some more of my dad in here. Uh, the airplane was invented when Dad was 12 years old. Uh, I, I, it just hadn't occurred to me that uh, what we're so common with now. He had no idea when he was first born as to what it was. Here's another event. Uh, Dad attended Dixie College, uh, which is now, let's see, they changed the name now. It's Utah, what is it? Utah Technical University. Uh, it was Dixie State College for a while. It was Dixie College when Dad graduated from there. He attended, he was in that first graduating class in 1913. He was in a student there from age 19 to age uh, 22. And then uh, World War I came along, and uh, Dad enlisted in the Army. And so the next thing that I've got in here for Dad was the, the, the little yellow bar here. It says Dad was in the U.S. Army and the engineers in France and Germany uh, from age 26 to age 28. Uh, there was a big flu epidemic. That was that uh, Spanish flu. 25 million or more died uh, well, Dad, at the same time, Dad was over in Europe uh, during this time. Dad attended, before he came back, he attended the Sorbonne University in Paris. The Army let him go to school over there for a while, and he attended that for just a little bit. He came back and uh, went down to uh, USC Dental School in Los Angeles and stayed down there, and that's why I grew up in L.A. And he married my mom. So I put in a long bar in there. I put in the, their marriage year was 1922. And until dad died in 1954, he married Mary Devere Baker Snow. And uh, that was from age uh, 31 to 63. Then when I got down here to uh, where uh, he was a dentist from uh, that time period, from uh, 26, he graduated from, uh, from USC. Till, uh, till he died. He was a dentist uh, right up till the day he died. He worked the day he died before he died. Then here's there's my brother being born. <clears throat> Notice my brother was born and lived about the last, roughly the last half of dad's life. There's me, and I'm a couple of years later than my brother. 
and uh, so on down the line. And you see all these other events. The helicopter was invented when dad was 45. Anyway, you see all this stuff that's on there uh, that uh, that you began to, to realize what the context was of the people at the time. And then uh, right at the end, I've got dad's uh, uh, death in here. It'll be right down here. He died of a heart attack in North Hollywood, uh, California. And age, he was actually 62, not 63. Now, that gives you an idea of what you can do. You begin to see the life in the context, and you see what was happening in the world with world events. So if, for example, uh, if you're looking for an ancestor and you find that there's a war going on during their lifetime, maybe there would be military records. Uh, or if there was a big disaster of some sort, maybe there would be an article in the newspaper about the disaster or where they lived or whatever was there. Anyway, that gives you an idea about uh, uh, about the, that uh, that itself. Let me show you the other one over here. That right down the next one down here because it illustrates. This is a, on. Uh, let me click on it. This is on a timeline I made up a couple of days ago on Joseph Smith. The um, uh, some of you may not be uh, uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, but this will illustrate several things uh, anyway. His, he was born in 1805 and died in 1844. And uh, so uh, I, I, first of all, put his ages in there. There's his timeline when he was born, Sharon, Windsor, Vermont, etc. I discovered that because of the time period that, uh, let me go down here to where is the first vision occurred. It, it, I, I write these things in caps so that, uh, well, I guess I've already passed it up. There it is. Uh, I write them in caps so they show up a little better for me to see uh, what they are uh, from the other colors. Uh, his, the first vision occurred when he was 14. But if you put in his age, if you put in his birth year as 1805, he was born in December of 1805 because he was born so close to the end of the year they actually calculate the date and they put that the first vision would have occurred when he was 15. So I discovered that if you put in his birth year as 1806, one year later than it really was, then all the dates match up with, with his age at the time. It's just that they figure the, uh, the date uh, from a different point uh, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the time period. Uh, so there's the uh, day he meets the angel Moroni at Hill Camora. And at that look at that, it's almost the middle of his life. Uh, of course, he didn't know it was going to be the middle of his life uh, because he didn't know he was going to be killed uh, then. Uh, he, he translates the Book of Mormon. He has the plates. Here's where he has the plates during that time period. He re he's got the plates the, that the Book of Mormon was translated from for about uh, three what is he got? He has them for about three years, doesn't he? But he only, uses, uh, by the time, yeah, from 21 to 23, age 21 to 23. But he translates the book in only about 75 days from what we have now. <clears throat> and it's 500 and something pages. So there's a little skinny line, but look, it's passed halfway through his life by the time he actually translates the, uh, uh, the Book of Mormon. There's a cholera epidemics, all these cholera things. These I didn't realize that all that stuff was going on. Uh, the LDS Church was organized uh, by him in 1830, and that's just over the last half of his life. Uh, he lives in Kirtland, Ohio, during that time period for seven years. He lives in uh, Nauvoo, Illinois. That's down here for uh, just that little bit, five years uh, before his his death, and he was killed in. Uh, uh, in Carthage, Illinois, when he was 38. Uh, you begin to see all the context, though, of all these other things that were going on at the same time uh, in there. Uh, okay, now, let me go back to the, uh, let me click over here on, we're back to the, the timelines thing. Oh, let's see, let me go back to my notes themselves uh, to show you, uh, okay, uh, about saving things. Now, uh, they've got a way to save those, by right-clicking and then saving, uh, but it doesn't save the colors, and I don't know why. We've tried to figure that out, uh, and so the way I've got it to, uh, uh, to do it is by saving the. Well, let me give this isn't the this isn't the notes. That's the 
all the notes. Let me get up here to the top and see if I can. Oh, well, uh, I got to turn the magnifier back on to see it. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let me get back to uh, the classes. Uh, and show you what uh, what I've got in here. And there's a lot more than we can talk about that uh, we won't have time to talk about in here. Okay, here's the here's the notes, and we're down here in uh, entering personal item personal events. We've talked about all that. Uh, saving the chart, uh, they've got a way to save it as it's as a black and white chart by clicking on the uh, that uh, printable version. But I want to save it with the colors. And so I figured out a way to do that, and that's this item 18 on the notes, that the colored charts can be saved by saving the HTML file. And you don't have to know a whole lot about HTML to do that, but here's the way to do it. To, to, you right-click on, uh, on the chart itself and go to Save As. There you'll see an option for Save As. Click on that, and there's two or three options in Save As. And I save it as what's called an MHTML file. And uh, what that does, and you tell it where to save it on your desktop or uh, wherever, and to give it a name. And what that does is it forms a file that once you click on that file, it will open up your default browser and it will look just like it looked like on the, the internet, but you won't be on the internet. You'll only be on your own computer. So you can, you're not even connected to the internet and uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, to see it. So that's what's explained there in that item as to how to do it. Um, there there are other ways that you can save it by saving the, the PowerPoint with colors and so on uh, with it. And once you save these, then you can post them on things like Face on um, uh, Family Search, uh, uh, put the timeline on there for an individual uh, once you've got it saved. So you, then you can upload it and put it in memories uh, for the uh, the individual uh, and so on. OK, now there's some comments down here, which we've already talked about. Things like the fact that if if you were born near the end of the year, the dates are going to the ages are going to be off slightly. And the illustration is here with uh, Joseph Smith and so on. Now, for some conclusions here, uh, try it with yourself. It's easy to use. Try it. Put your own name and your own birth year and uh, the current year, 2024, in there. And uh, just click, then don't enter any personal uh, things in there. Just see what happened during your lifetime. You'll be surprised at how many different things there are. But when you begin to go back and use it for an ancestor, you get all kinds of other insights as to what happened in that uh, a person's life. So just experiment with it, play around. It's simple to use, and it's free. And uh, it's really, uh, I've just been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, each time I teach a class for any of these family history classes, I always learn something new about my own family. This time I learned about my dad and my mom. Now I got to investigate a little bit more and get more, uh, draw one of these things, do one of these things for my mom and get the information on that. Uh, and, and then you can save it off uh, with what's there. I think you'll find that it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's it's easy to uh, uh, to do. Now, let me see if I can uh, get to uh, back to our. Uh, here we are. Okay, now these are the these are the demos that we've looked at. Uh, so, well, I guess I'm I'm out of that. Uh, let's see, hit F five. Uh, that'll start over. I need to, and I'll turn off this magnifier thing here in just a second. Okay, now now I'll turn off the magnifier so that. There it is. Okay, so here's the summary as to what we've just looked at. We looked at the website, ourtimelines.com. Uh, we, we generated some timelines from it, and I showed you a couple of others that I have generated and saved off so I didn't have to enter the data here. Uh, you can add personal items up to 10, and if you know enough about the HTML programming, you can add more or you can delete and so on on it. Um, saving, we talked about that, and some ideas and what you can do with it. And then, oh, we did not talk yet, but I'll just mention there are additional features on here. For example, you can click on peers and what do they call it? Peers and, and uh, uh, contemporaries, I think it's called. And it'll show you who else was born in that same year. Uh, or there's another one that you can put in just a, a birth, a month, 
uh, a month and day, and everybody that was born on that month and day uh, will show up. It's just, it's just a fun website. There's a bunch of FAQs, that, uh, frequently asked questions, that'll give you a lot more insight uh, into it. Now, we're, I've actually kept you longer than I had intended to, but have you got a, anything, a quick question or a comment that you'd like to make? And if you do, just if you're on Zoom, just unmute your mic and, and ask away. Or if you're on Facebook, type in the question and Gerhard will relay it. I don't have any on uh, Facebook, Don. Okay. Are there any on Zoom? Any of you that want to ask a question on it? It's a simple website to use. And uh, once you try it out, it's just it's it's really easy to get to. It's easy to remember. You don't even just ourtimelines.com. It's easy to remember and type it in. Well, anyway, I've appreciated you being with us, and so we've looked at the the website. And uh, if you tuned in late, uh, the notes are stored on at that link down at the bottom of the page there, and there that's my website. So they'll be on there. They're on there forever. And uh, this has been recorded. So Gerhard will have this posted on both on Facebook for a couple of months and then on our YouTube channel, uh, the UV tag YouTube channel, uh, which you can get to by searching for YouTube or just search for Donald R. Snow and you'll uh, come up with it. And there's probably 50 or 60 of my past classes that are on there now. And the notes are always stored right there at the, that screen at the bottom of the uh, page. And, uh, they're there. Uh, the links are on there, too. It tells you more about where the links are, et cetera. Well, thank you, folks, for uh, being with us. We appreciate you. Hope that you've gotten a couple of ideas and give it a try. We have one person who's unmuted themselves, Don. Oh, OK. Is there a question? Uh, no question. I was oh. just want to tell you thanks. You guys do a terrific job. Appreciate all you do. <laughs> okay, thank you. Who was that? I don't have my. Oh, this is Quilden. Oh, Quilden from St. George. Good, yeah, wonderful. Still wonderful. down here. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. You've been getting some rain down there in St. George. Yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> Sun shining again, though. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, all right. Thank you, folks. Appreciate you.